Good evening, everyone. So, here I am walking down the street going to a barbecue because I've got nothing else better to do other than record this. Of course, you didn't come here to find out about my plans. No, you wanted another politics video. But as always, before I begin, I shall be putting any relevant links in the description below because I want to talk about Alex Belfield today. A man who has been viciously persecuted. A man who has been witch hunted. A man who some people would say may be a bit of a knob at times, but one thing he is not, for the most part, is a liar. This man, unfortunately, has been found guilty on four counts of simple stalking. Mainly on the BBC. Mainly the snake known as Jeremy Vine. And I think, what's his name? Was it Phil Delaney or, or whoever it was? Michael Delaney? But this man, this snake as it were, Jeremy Vine. Well, he's alongside three other people that Belfield's been apparently stalking. Over email messages sent. Which, it's a bit scary when you think about it. Because if someone like Alex Belfield can be found guilty on four counts of stalking on the back of emails, then surely someone like me could be found guilty of emailing people for stalking them. For me, it doesn't make any sense. And apparently this is based off of 29 emails across eight years. Now, far be it for me to know anything about the law, I'm not making myself out to be king shit of Turd Mountain, let's be clear on that much. But last time I checked, 29 over a course of eight years doesn't seem like much to me and doesn't seem like grounds to simply accuse Alex Belfield of stalking. But what do I know? Now, if it was, oh, I don't know, 2,000 emails across eight years, or even a 1,000, to me, that sounds like that would be more cause to have the man locked up. And no, this is not me bashing on Alex because I'm trying to put a point across here that if somebody like Alex can be sentenced guilty, well sorry, he's going to be sentenced in September, but that's beside the point. Anyway, if he can be found guilty of simply sending emails, but they want to put it under simple stalking, then as I said, what's happening, well, what would happen if somebody like me were to send a few emails to some dickhead in the Independent known as Liddy, Lizzie Dearden. Would that then give her grounds to do that to me? Would that give her the means to be able to send me to fucking prison just because I sent a few emails that she didn't like? Digest it. It's a very, very, very scary precedent that is being sent or set up by the mainstream media and the courts. I think the fact the man is being sentenced to this crap or charged with this crap for that matter is downright lunacy. Now, if he was knocking on the doors of the BBC for eight years on a regular basis and or harassing journalists in person, then yes, I would say Alex needs to go and have a suspended sentence or prison or whatever. However, last time I checked, he's done no such thing. He may use a bit of strong language. He may be blunt in what he calls people. Hell, he's blunt with the police. He's blunt with a lot of fucking things. But, unfortunately, I think this is a classic case of wokery where we have spineless BBC journalists 
who have the gall to protect Jimmy Savile or to falsely portray news and even COVID because mainstream media are still lying about COVID. Oh, that's right. They've got exemption from the COVID laws. I keep forgetting. And no, I'm not going to let that fucking go because the mainstream media are the ones who should be held to account. But hey, that's why I'm a normal person walking down this sunny street in Norwich while they're in a broadcasting station earning hundreds of thousands of pounds a year in some cases and basically acting like they don't give a fuck. Oh wait, they don't. Uh, really bothers me. But hey, oh, it is what it is. But yeah, Alex is going to be sentenced in September. I think it's mid-September. Trying to recall this all off the top of my head is not exactly easy. But I digress. Apparently, well, no, not apparently, definitely, that snake, the rattlesnake, Jeremy Vine, he decided to compare Jimmy Savile to Alex Belfield. Yes, you couldn't make it up. And only the BBC would be as fucking heartless, spineless and insensitive as Jeremy Vine to be able to say something like, and I quote his words, he is the Jimmy Savile of trolling, end quote. And by he, obviously, he's referring to Alex Belfield. Now to even compare stalking to a paedophile who sexually harasses, assaults, and gropes the British public, and even children while they are dying in a goddamn hospice, I would hardly say that compares to a simple charge of stalking. And I would honestly put this to a poll, and I think the vast majority of people would agree that pedophilia is a far more insulting crime, a far more basically degenerate crime than simply sending emails to a BBC organisation. And frankly, as much as I have, have to be fair to a degree that nobody deserves to be harassed, the BBC has honestly brought all that it has done upon itself. Their constant bias, protecting Jimmy Savile, how they were willing to hire a hitman for £50,000 to kill a drug dealer in front of his children. The fact that they were able to have Alex Belfield found guilty on four out of eight counts of stalking. Even though all Alex has done, from what we've seen of the evidence, is basically send emails and, ha and make videos on his YouTube channel. I think what is really going on here is there is a symbolic message the BBC are trying to set up. Because what's their biggest threat? Simple, competition. And I certainly have no competition with how much I weigh, but hey hey. Anyway, these guys are trying to send a message to us the British public in that anybody that sends emails that they even deem slightly offensive because we all know how sensitive the snowflakes are on the left wing you have a chance to be prosecuted in court for it now obviously if it's 2,000 emails well yeah that's going way too far however as I said it was 29 for Alex, and now look what they're doing. It's shameful, shambolic, and downright disgusting. What happened to real crime? And what's funny is, I made a point where you could actually be sentenced 
to more time in prison if you were saying anything negative about the government. You could literally be sentenced to like, was it 16, 18 years in prison? For the, on, it was an online harm they were trying to do. And yet you could get more time than murderers sometimes get. Just because you speak out about the government. I made the story, which was like, oh, what have you been sent for, down for? Oh, I murdered somebody. What about you? I spoke out against the government. You know, that guy. I mean, we, we could laugh about it, but then you suddenly realise that this is actually deadly serious. Because as I said, the BBC are trying to send a message to everyone that you don't have free speech, that you don't have a right to be able to criticise people, that you don't have a right to be able to say what you want to say. Right now, we're living in a, I probably want to say degeneration, because let's be honest, that's really what it is, but we are living in a generation where people are so sensitive and people are so afraid of being called racist that they are worried about that and they have to get us to buck up our ideas. When they say, when somebody says, there's a pregnant woman over there. No, 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 that's a pregnant person. Or that's a female over there. Wait a minute, is that a female? I thought they identified as she, her, it, or he, her, him, or whatever, you know. All this wokery bullshit that's going on in this country. People need to wake up and realize that this government, this media, are trying to control us. But last time I checked, the 1% and the 4% individually do not outweigh or outnumber the 5%. You know, 1% control the world, 4% of global sell-out puppets, 90% of the world are fast asleep, 5% are trying to wake up the 90%, and the 4% don't want the 5%. They're trying to stop them from waking up the 90%. That's what we're facing right now. And I am very concerned that if this continues, we could be looking at a very real 1984 situation, an Orwellian nightmare, where basically everything is moderated. If you have a different opinion, you can be outcast. If you want to go against the norm, then they will have you go through some extensive bullshit to get you to buck up your ideas. It's an uphill battle. And I'm not just talking about the hill I've got to go up right now. Anyway, this is an uphill battle, but in the end, we can still beat them. But we'll only fail if good men and women do nothing. So my message to the mainstream media is, grow the fuck up. Stop being offended at everything. Stop trying to virtue signal. Stop trying to tell us what to do, what to think, what to believe. And more importantly, you and the police at Notting Hill need to stop harassing Alex Belfield. Because there has been a witch hunt by the police as well to persecute him. And that ain't right. That is not right at all. The man was harassed by Notting Hill Police, had his door kicked down by the bomb squad when they knew damn well Alex wasn't a terrorist and that he hadn't done anything to warrant him being a terrorist. But they kicked it down anyway. DC Percival wanted to cross-examine Alex for 20 plus hours in a police station. Yet, when Alex wanted to do the same thing in that court during the last three weeks, she didn't want to. A classic case of, I can dish it, but I can't fucking take it. Silly little cunt. Yeah, I am willing to say that. If you aren't prepared to have onto you what you would do onto others, then you shouldn't do it at all. But of course, 
this is the police we're talking about. The police believe they're above everyone else. That's why you see a lot of people sneered down on us. That's why you see a lot of people thinking they can treat the working class like absolute shit. Well, in the end, the truth always comes out. And in the end, those responsible will be held to account, held to the hands of justice. And they will face judgment one day. All I hope is that when sentencing comes, that Alex Belfield, he is acquitted of all charges. Because there is nothing wrong with sending emails to people. There is nothing wrong with saying, these people, I'll see you next Tuesdays. And there is nothing wrong with being able to express yourself on the internet. My name's Tabima, also known as Abathur Rex, and I am, as always, very, very bad news for the corrupt mainstream media, the court and the jury that decided that he was guilty over 29 emails on four counts of stalking. And, of course, this corrupt government and police force that runs our country that think they're better than us, but they're not. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening, day, morning, wherever you are. And most importantly, fuck the government.